Hello everyone, welcome to Study IQ. So in this session, we will be talking about sociology. I'll give you an introduction or orientation towards sociology syllabus of civil service examination. Okay, so we will start with the paper one. I'll discuss about the syllabus of paper one. And after attending the session, you will be in a position to decide whether to go with sociology or not. So if you have already attended session, then it will be beneficial for you in different way. If you have not yet decided which option that you're planning to take after after attending the session your questions will be solved okay and after that if you have any doubt in you know selecting your optional or if you have any doubt with respect to sociology you can get in touch with me that's my Instagram ID and apart from that I have done videos uh, already in economics okay Indian economy we have covered almost covered and we have completely covered modern India we have done with quantitative aptitude also all those videos of mine are available in this uh, telegram channel you can join the telegram channel you'll get all my videos over there apart from that uh, if you need to get in touch with me you can you can uh, you know uh, join or you can connect with me in this Instagram ID so let's get started with the sociology syllabus we will do first paper one and then we will move to paper two the main difference between paper one and paper two is you may see the same topics in paper one and paper two for example we talk about politics in paper one we will also talk about politics in paper two we will talk about family kinship in paper one we will talk about the same in paper two we will talk about uh, religion in paper one we will talk about religion in paper two we will talk about social change in paper one also in paper two but the fundamental thing that you need to understand is whenever we talk about paper one it's all about conceptual understanding and this is at the international level when we talk about paper to it's at the Indian level and more of application okay so the concepts that you have learned in paper one will be applied in paper two so if you see the papers the questions which have asked paper one more or less you will get direct questions and it will be very easy for you to score very high mark in paper one so if you see it is very easy for you to score 150 plus out of 250 in paper one but paper two is so dynamic because it is application and the marks will fluctuate also suppose if you score one set this year you may score 120 next year you can't say okay but if you are good in sociology you will definitely score 150 plus in sociology paper one I've always scored uh, the three years uh, I have given mains and three years I've cleared mains because of sociology and in all those three years I have scored more than 150 in paper one and in the first two years I've scored 300 plus and uh, finally I've actually scored around 270s my mark was in 270s the reason is that year it was actually uh, slightly low scoring in 2015 and after that again in 2016 etc if you see the marks are so high people are scoring 350 plus etc so I'll talk about all the positives and negatives of sociology with my experience of giving three mains okay so here uh, before that let me quickly discuss with you the structure of the question paper if you are new to this the structure is like this paper 1 and paper 2 structure is same so if you see paper 1 I'll talk about paper one exactly the same will be the case of paper two also. So there will be two parts A and B two parts will be there. So part A will be like this. The first question you will have, you know, five sub questions A, B, C, D, E, each carrying 10 marks. Okay, so 10 into 5. 50 marks for the first question each question actually carrying 50 mark but split here is there are five questions sub questions. Now second question within that there are three sub questions A b c here marks like this uh, 20 mark then 20 mark then 10 mark so first two 20 then 10 some the, some papers they can change also first one 20 the rest of the 30 you can change like 15 15 but ultimately this total will be 50 that means each question is carrying 50 marks okay then third question again you will have a b c same pattern 20 20 10 then fourth question Again, we'll have A, B, C, three questions, 20, 20, 10. Okay, so this is about part A. Now, same replica will be part B also. So the question number will be here, five. So five is similar to this one. So five questions will be there just like this. So five questions, again, 50 marks. Okay, then question number six, exactly like this. Three questions will be there, again, 50 marks. So question number seven will be like this question number eight will be like this okay so all questions effectively carrying 50 marks within that split up will be there okay now so total how many questions are there eight questions are there or oh, eight questions 
are there in total now what is your total mark your total mark will be 250 okay so out of which this question is compulsory there is no choice this question is also compulsory so the first question in paper uh, part a and the first question in part b is compulsory that means five short questions from part a five short questions from part b is compulsory you have to attempt it okay then that means uh, 100 markers over out of 250 now how much is left out 150 marks are left out right so 150 marks means you need to attempt three questions for three questions how many questions are available now you have six questions available now so that means you have choices for this three question three you need to write from six but the question now here is can you attempt all the three from this three or can you attempt all the three from this three no that is not possible at least one you should be selecting from each that means you can either go with two from here and one from here or you can go with one from here and two from here so in that way you need to complete three question three question means 150 mark so 100 plus 150 put together 250 and same as the pattern for paper two also there will be two parts four questions each first questions in each part is compulsory then rest of the six question you need to select three that's based on your choice but at least one you should pick from each part that is the condition so that's about the structure of the question paper the questions will be easy in paper one paper two it will be more familiar to you but it will be dynamic okay so let's now get into the syllabus so here if you see uh, sociology the discipline so this is the first uh, chapter okay any subject the emergence of that particular subject okay in emergence of that particular discipline is important so the first topic here is emergence of sociology now the context also they have given here modernity social changes in europe and emergence of sociology so what we need to do here is we will be discussing in detail about what you mean by modernity okay rather we will discuss about what is age of enlightenment or renaissance period so when we discuss about renaissance period before renaissance period what was the situation you might be already studied that in history world history dark ages right so we will briefly talk about dark ages then we will talk about renaissance period or the age of enlightenment and then we will talk about modernity which is a associated with renaissance period and modernity just uh, modernity did not come just like that it brought along with it a lot of social changes right for example uh, authoritarian form to democratic from the political side if you see so there are political changes democracy is an example there are social changes uh, extended family or joint family to nuclear family migrations new type of crimes okay from economic side if you see industrial revolution new factories emerged new type of works etc so a new type of relation between labor and the uh, industry so all those things is what the changes i mean here okay so we will study what is modernity what are the elements of modernity political modernity social modernity you know intellectual modernity modernity economic modernity everything impact we will see industrialization is not that smooth it came to be associated with a lot of social problems new types of crimes emerged slums emerged etc okay we will discuss that and you know you need to explain all these changes but till then the existing bodies of knowledge like history political science economics etc these uh, disciplines cannot explain all these changes now there is a need to redefine you know now there is a need to redefine the society was felt at the same time you need to explain all these things so there is a new uh, knowledge or body of knowledge required so that is actually the context of emergence of sociology in this context intellectuals started thinking of a discipline which could uh, talk about all these uh, issues social issues and also provide provide solution to these issues and hence the context for sociology is there sociology emerged sociology emerged in 1838 it is actually relatively a very young discipline and that is an advantage for you you have very limited uh, you know uh, subject to study okay so the scope is actually very limited but with time actually scope of sociology gradually widened and that is what the second question what is the scope of the subject so once you study sociology once you complete the syllabus you will be in a position to write a better answer there is no need to teach you or there is no need to give a ready-made answer to you but and whenever i am taking the class obviously i'll give you a answer which is prepared but i will tell you that is actually not required because you will be in a position to write the scope once you have completed this sociology discussions because you will be in a position to write the 
the scope what is the scope right because initially scope was limited you are explaining only the social changes but with the contribution of new thinkers sociologists the scope of sociology widened now it is actually permeating through each and every aspect of social life like clinical sociology is there criminal sociology is there that means it's part of criminology also sociology of health is there so the scope of sociology is actually widened and then this part comparison with other social sciences so you will get questions like sociology and economics sociology and anthropology sociology and philosophy sociology and history etc okay so that will be a very easy question for you once you complete the syllabus because once you know what is sociology you will be in a position to compare it with any other subject okay so that we will be doing anyway after after this in the class itself then sociology and common sense see this debate is always there the reason is when you see the syllabus you will see a lot of things which is already known to you for example uh, today if i am saying we let's study family okay then you will tell me that family what is there to study we already know this right we have a family we are living in a family so what new to study exactly the same as with religion you are part of a religion and you know what is religion and what is the point in teaching something new about religion to you right that is a question for example politics family religion etc all these things which is studied by sociology is already rooted in the minds of people so people mistakenly believe that it is nothing more than the application of common sense but is it really the application of common sense is what we are going to see here okay sociological knowledge whether it is related to family religion or whatever it is it is not just based on common sense it is based on evidence and reason okay so we will that that uh, conclusions will be testable also because we have done the studies we have done experiments and these experiments are testable also common sense that may not be true okay so for example uh, we will talk about all these things in detail so this is actually the context of this debate people mistakenly believe that sociology is nothing more than the application of common sense okay but that is not the case sociology is much much more than common sense and you will realize that soon and sociology is very easy also but without common sense sociology cannot uh, you know work right common sense is required that is the base of sociology actually okay so that's done first chapter definitely you will get one question from this and there may be possibilities that you'll get two questions also one short note and one long question you can get one question is for sure from this particular topic that you can take it for granted okay then let's move on to the second topic so second chapter science scientific methods and critique see the concept is here you need to know what is the background of this debate once you know the background of this debate what is sociology whether it is science or not then the question can be solved very easily see ever since uh, sociology emerged you know initial sociologists what they did is they tried to make it on the line similar to natural sciences the reason is i've told you already sociology was a relatively very very young discipline right so sociology didn't had that initial legitimacy people were not accepting this new subject so what the initial sociologists did is they tried to imitate what all things has done in natural science like physics chemistry biology so they tried to use the methods which is actually used in physics chemistry biology readily in sociology for example since simon he even thought of social physics which is on the line similar to natural science similarly you know herbert spencer he compared sociology sociology or society with an organism like biology okay so the initial sociologists they are oriented towards making sociology on the line similar to natural science but later sociologists rejected it that is not possible the reason is natural science is dealing with matter whose behavior can be predicted means if i'm telling you i'm boiling water at 100 degrees celsius i'm sure that it will get hot no doubt in that there is no need to have any doubt in that but you know sociology is dealing with human behavior and the behavior cannot be predicted you cannot tell the human being will behave in what way even you cannot predict the behavior of your father mother your son or daughter right so different people will behave differently to a same situation and the same person also may behave differently uh, if he is exposed to the same situation later okay so the behavior of human beings cannot be predicted so the ultimate reducible element of sociology that is the individual the basic subject matter of sociology is human beings whose behavior cannot be predicted so can you ensure objectivity if you cannot ensure objectivity can you consider it as natural science can you study it like natural science no but we will say it is science 
our conclusion will be sociology is a science no doubt in that we are accepting that or we are claiming that but you know sociology is not similar to natural science sociology is a science but it is not similar to natural science but it is a science in itself the reason is we are conducting scientific enquiry so science is more or less understood as a body of uh, you know not as a body of knowledge but a method of enquiry okay so if your enquiry if the enquiry is conducted in a reasoned manner okay by using scientific methods then it could be understood as science so we can call sociology as social science okay we will come to that in detail you will not face any problem in this when the class starts you will understand everything in detail okay i'll i'll promise you you will not face any problem in any of the concepts in sociology then major theoretical strands of research methodology once you have done with sociology you will automatically know this so i am not getting into that actually the next two topics are related to the two most important theoretical strands one is positivism and then non-positivism these are the two most important initial uh, theoretical strands in sociology positivism and non-positivism we will discuss this in detail in the coming sessions okay so fact value objectivity i have just before discussed with you when we talked about science objectivity so can we ensure objectivity in sociological studies or not that is actually the question here if yes how can you ensure objectivity if not what are the problems the problems start from you know right from the beginning of deciding the topic itself i may choose a topic which is more convenient to you there itself subjectivity is there collection of data i'll collect data which is readily available to me not i i may not put too much effort to collect data which is uh, very difficult to get right so that data which i have collected may not be accurate then when i am making interpretation my uh, you know there are different biases possible like gender biases possible religious biases possible regional biases possible let's suppose uh, uh, suppose a muslim is conducting a study on hindu there will be a possibility that uh, uh, he will find everything in hindu religion as not good or something like that similarly a north indian is conducting a study on you know south indian subjects that will also create some bias a male conducting a study on female that will that will be biased right if a female is conducting a study on let's say domestic violence that also will be biased as if so especially if that female who's conducting the study is subjected to uh, you know the domestic violence so uh, we will discuss all these in detail what are the possibilities in you know ensuring objectivity and what are the possibilities of not ensuring or compromising objectivity all these are you know again and again i'm telling you these all are simple topics only the uh, you know topic name looks difficult the concepts are very simple okay and it is very easy to study also and you will score very good marks also okay next is research methods and analysis is a very dry topic actually whatever is there you need to study and then you will go and write qualitative and quantitative methods qualitative methods are more suitable in social sciences like sociology because these are you know in textual uh, textual data you can develop when it comes to quantitative methods these are more good for natural sciences the data which will be available in terms of numbers quantitative okay so natural science actually you can quantify social science you cannot quantify can you quantify anger can you quantify the emotions no right so social science qualitative methods will be better we will discuss this in detail in the class techniques of data collection different techniques will see questionnaire interviews surveys focus group discussions content analysis different different methods of data collection we will see again no problem okay variables sampling hypothesis reliability validity all these are possible short notes so you can actually get a two marks two questions from this and you may for sure you'll get one question from here okay next is the most important around you know 60 percentage of your syllabus directly from thinkers and up to 18 80 percentages uh, you know indirect also you will get from thinkers so here i'm not discussing too much about thinkers i'll just uh, give a idea about this we will not be taking any theory or anything unlike what we have done in the beginning karl marx very important thinker only this names looks difficult okay again i'm telling you the theories historical materialism mode of production alienation is a very beautiful theory class struggle most of you know about this class struggle okay his concepts of communism his concept of socialism capitalism everything we will cover in the most beautiful way possible okay then emil durkheim division of labor social fact suicide religion and society okay max weber social action ideal types authority bureaucracy protestant ethic and spirit of capitalism 
okay then if at all i'm saying thinkers are difficult the only thinker who is slightly difficult it's not difficult slightly difficult to understand is talcott parson and this theory social system but we will do it in the best possible way and i may i'll make sure that all of you will understand this theory see at least all these theories i will try to cover in youtube okay F apart from the regular classes regular classes we will see uh, everything in the syllabus but in youtube i'll definitely cover almost all the important theories even the social system also i will cover here okay now, if, if you have any doubt you can get in touch with me here okay that's my instagram id or you can uh, call me this is my number 9790892697 or uh, 9895577775 okay so you can message me you can call me okay telegram or uh, whatsapp or anything for classes for any doubts for mentorship for test series sociology anything okay so the advantage of understanding this is if you know social system you will understand every system and society is comprised of systems okay society is full of systems so you will be in a position to answer each and everything in a very good sociological perspective once you understood this theory of social system because society is full of systems political system economic system cultural system family system okay all these are systems so i hope you will understand it in a better way in the class and you will be in a position to replicate in every other system also then pattern variable is a very small topic Robert Merton, latent manifest functions, conformity and deviance. This topic will actually help you very much in your essay paper GS. The concept that you're going to learn here, you will be in a position to readily apply in your ethics paper. For example, I'll tell you, he's, here he is actually talking about deviance. Deviance means you are deviant. Deviant means you are violating the norms. Norms means norms are the expected behavior. Okay, there is a difference between norms and laws. Laws, if you break, you are a criminal. Norms, if you break, uh, it is an expected behavior. You are not considered as criminal, but you are a deviant. Okay, see here, uh, if you see goals and means, right? There is, there is always a goal for you and there are different ways to achieve the means. Okay, so he is giving five possible combinations of goals and means. Okay, so first one, I'm not talking about the theoretical names. He is giving different names, conformist, okay, the innovator, the ritualist, etc. The different names are given. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking now from ethics point of view. How can you apply this concept in ethics? Okay, so there may be a situation where you achieve the goal and you will follow the correct means. You follow the correct means you will achieve the goal okay so this is here there is no you know uh, this is fully conformity okay there is no violation of norm that means this is not deviant activity now there are four different other combinations which are deviant in nature okay for example first you will achieve goal but you will follow different mean one of the goal is to become rich but you try to be a robber you can be rich by doing jobs you can uh, directly that is a positive means but negative means are robbery theft etc right so here negative mean second okay that is an example okay second uh, you will not achieve the goal but you always follow the correct means you will always follow the correct means can you tell me an example bureaucrat bureaucrat who's following excessively the rules but he may forget about his uh, you know goal he may not be able to achieve the goal but he definitely follow the rules or a teacher he keep on teaching the students without knowing that the student is not understanding anything what is his goal the goal is to teach the student and make the student understand what he's teaching but he's not achieving that goal but he keep on teaching okay so these are examples third possibility is you will not follow the goals you will not uh, you know achieve the or you will not follow the means you will not achieve goal also you don't have any means you don't have any goals drug addicts saints etc these kinds of people okay then there is a possibility you will reject these two goals and means which are already available you will construct new goal and for that new means for example terrorist etc this is the worst situation terrorist maoist etc will come under this category their goals are different not accepted goals in society that is a different goal and for that they will find a new means also so i hope this is clear now suppose you got a question in ethics okay a case study you are getting as an ias officer you will be put forth in a particular situation okay so the situation will be given and they will ask you uh, which and you know how they will form options i'll tell you how the examiner will form options one option will be like this you will be following the correct means and reaching the goal so what you need to do you need to pick that option 
that is the best possible option second option will be this one you will achieve the goal but you may not follow the goal for example in a flood situation uh, you know in a flood situation uh, you are an IS officer you are a collector and you need to evacuate the people for that government vehicles are not there and you are seeking the help of a private person but he is not ready to give that then you have to forcefully acquire but is that the right mean no but you are doing it that means means not correct but you are achieving the goal evacuating the people this is your second best option if you are getting the government vehicle and evacuating that is the first and the best option this is the second best option okay now the, these two are the possible options and then this case you will not achieve the goal but you keep on following the rules so that is your third third best option i won't say best option among the, the available that is the third best option rather than following this not following the means and not following the goals better than that anyway this is better okay so i hope you understood this is how you will be and in some cases they will only give you a case and you, they will ask you what are the options available to you so you by knowing this table you will be in a position to write these four options and which one you will select i will select which one i'll select this one okay i'll select this one and you can tell the reason also because i'm following the correct means i'm following the correct goals in my ethics paper i have followed this and that year uh, i was the topper in ethics this is the technique that i was following in the case study if you know this table uh, if you know this theory conformity and deviance all the you know uh, case studies you can solve very easily just like that you don't want to you know apply deontology theory everything is actually applied here deontology theory or utilitarianism you don't even want to write all those things okay anyway when we start ethics when we discuss about ethics i'll discuss those theories all those theories we'll discuss and with that also i'll help you or i'll teach you how to answer the questions but just by using this single simple concept that you have learned in sociology how can you solve all the ethics questions the part two of ethics questions not the conceptual one just by applying this you can solve it okay we will get into that in detail then meet okay now after this uh, now this topic this chapter is so important very important not from just sociology point of view you see the topics which are coming here it is important for your entire gs gs1 gs2 gs3 okay these equality inequality hierarchy exclusion poverty deprivation all these are in your paper gs paper one as part of social issues polity governance also all these are coming third economy uh, paper three also it is coming so in all these important ethics also these topics are very very important so in all four gs papers these topics are important essay very very important the reason is and more than essay personality test this once you have a very good knowledge about this your personality will also improve I'm, I'm not saying your personality will improve automatically that will happen your knowledge will improve your perspective of seeing things will improve see if somebody is saying you we can remove inequality okay government is doing a lot of things to remove inequality is that ever possible is there any society which is uh, purely egalitarian the so-called communist societies or the so-called socialist society are they purely egalitarian what was their claim they want to make an egalitarian society where everybody equal but is that really possible practically possible that is not possible why inequality is actually serving certain vital functions in society therefore inequality is considered inevitable any society if society need to survive inequality should be there because inequality is you know serving certain vital functions for the functioning of society otherwise society cannot function and that's the reason why despite the fact that government is doing a lot of things a lot of measures to bring equality uh, you see is there any society with which is uh, without rich and poor no if poor is there rich cannot survive if everybody equal society will not function okay so that's what this functionalist theory we will discuss this in detail so you'll get an in-depth understanding and you will be in a position to justify inequality to anyone and opposite to that we will see marx's theory marx will tell you here you will study why inequality should not be there and what are the problems of inequality and what to do to remove inequality so we are talking both functionalist as well as conflict and then we will talk about what is the need of communist society or a socialist society and the concepts also we will discuss and that's what i've told you your perspective will you know widen like anything you will be you know a different individual or a human being once you understand the sociological concepts it will not be, you will not think like a common man definitely okay because that's the kind of perspectives and the thinkers that you're going to study but easy only it's not that complex automatically with time your perspectives will change you try to think in a rational way 
now it is confined understanding i'm not saying you will think in a sociological way you will start thinking in a rational way that is what actually required when it comes to interview you will be in a position to present your arguments in the best ever possible way with a good perspective i'll guarantee you that okay then weberian theory will give you a multi-dimensional understanding that is much better than these two we will discuss that in detail later then dimensions as i've told you inequality different dimensions class for example upper class middle class lower class within upper class upper upper class middle upper middle class upper lower class we will see that status groups gender gender based inequality stratification ethnicity race etc then social mobility open and closed system what do you mean by open and closed system if the society is giving you opportunity to move up it is an open system for example the modern societies there is a possibility to move up social mobility is there that is open system you born as a poor person you can end as a rich person you born as a son of a farmer you becoming an IAS officer that is actually in open system in closed system that is not possible what is the example of closed system the caste system Brahmin you born as a Brahmin you end as a Brahmin you born as a Dalit you end as a Dalit you born as a Shudra you end as a Shudra some possibilities of changes there through Sanskritization etc that we will discuss you can even change your caste through Sanskritization apart from that women can change their caste through hypergamy and hypogamy that is through marriage okay those are avenues of social mobility and that's your second topic sources and causes of mobility what are the sources of mobility education is one source you know getting better job is one source okay all these are the sources of mobility marriage all these we will discuss in detail see you will not face any problem in any of the sociology concepts once you done with the classes and i don't think that you need to join for any expensive uh, coaching centers for completing sociology okay so works and economic life work and economic life social organization of work in different societies like slave society feudal society capitalist society slave society it's master slaves so we are going to talk about the relation between masters and slave and how the work is organized similarly when we talk about feudal society we will talk about feudal lords and serfs clergy so how the work is organized in that society and also in capitalist society what is the relation between workers and capitalists how their interests are contradictory how the work is organized work what what is the interest of the worker what is the interest of the capitalist how is it creating uh, you know antagonism okay so how is it creating conflict and how that will reach to socialism communism we will discuss all okay then this i don't think i need to tell anything here formal and informal organization of work labor and society how labor is connected with society okay the kind of job that you're doing and you know the life that you have in society will be connected we'll discuss that in detail all positive and negative aspects of this will be discussed politics and society we will discuss exactly the same chapter in paper 2 also but as uh, as i've told you this is at the conceptual level international level there we will discuss at the indian context okay so sociological theories of power some theories marx theory weber's theory we will discuss that in thinkers here exactly the same so this is actually a repetition okay so power elite bureaucracy pressure groups political parties all these are familiar to you i don't think that i need to explain it here nation state citizenship democracy civil society ideology protest agitation social movements collective action revolution you know all this uh, at least you have an idea the the objective is to familiarize you with the subject so here i'm not getting into the details of it that we will do in the class okay then religion and society sociological theories of religion when we do thinkers we will cover this part over there itself okay we don't want to study it separately here types of religious practices animism monism pluralism monism means belief in one god uh, monotheism okay pluralism polytheism pluralism belief in multiple gods pantheism believing everything as god you see a stone you worship that you see a cow you worship that you see a, a tree you worship that you see a river you worship that you worship everything that's what pantheism then sect cult etc these are different uh, communities okay we'll discuss religion in modern society religion and science this this is a possible essay question okay secularization gs topic religious revivalism 
So you might have attended already my classes on revivalist movement. We have done Wahhabi movement. Study IQ itself, we have completed this. Wahhabi movement, you can get that videos. It's a religious revivalist movement. Uh, and uh, then we have discussed about Arya Samaj. That was also a religious revivalist movement. We'll discuss that here in detail. Fundamentalism, all these are, you know, your GS topics also. Now systems of kinship. So it's all about family. So family, household, marriage. We'll discuss in detail. Okay, types and forms of ma family, extended family, nuclear family, okay, single parent family, etc. We'll do that. Lineage and descent, patriarchy and sexual division of labor. Why sexual division of labor is there? Is anything to do with patriarchy? Why certain categories of jobs are reserved for female, like teachers, you know, nurse, etc. Why females prefer more of these kinds of jobs? Okay, so the connection between patriarchy and sexual division of labor, we will discuss. Contemporary trends. What is a contemporary trend? Okay, next is uh, social change in modern society. Sociological theories of social change, development and dependency, agents of social change. Agents of social change means education is an agent of social change and actually that was the next topic, education and social change. Science and technology is an agent of social change. How science and technology change the life of female after, you know, washing machine, dishwashers, etc. They get more time and that they can do in productive work, etc. There are many things that I need to discuss, social media, computers, internet, everything we will cover there. And apart from that, law is an agent of social change. Uh, constitution is an agent of social change. Constitution brought equality. That means that changed the Indian society drastically, right? And law, for example, Domestic Violence Act, okay, Widow Remarriage Act, Anti Sadi Resolution, all these actually change the life of female like anything. So, law is an agent of social change. That law in itself is an indicator of social change. That means the laws are coming, means that shows society is changing. When society is changing, then only new laws are required, right? So, law is there, means that is it that in itself is an indicator of social change and that brings social change also okay so that's all about paper one and i tell you paper one scoring is so easy you might have already understood that the topics are very easy the questions will be direct and the applications of this is what you're gonna see in paper two so let's now move quickly to paper two so paper two we will start with this uh, rural and agrarian social structure. The first topic is the idea of Indian village. The, there are different concepts related to village. We will see uh, the idea of Indian village in detail in the class, village studies. I'm not discussing anything here. These are not sociological concepts. You already know what is it, right? Then agrarian social structure, evolution of land tenure system, land reforms. Now, if you are regularly following my videos in study IQ, you might have seen that I've done video on this already, like permanent settlement, okay, Mahalwari settlement, Ryotwari settlement, etc. These are the important land tenure systems. What about land reforms? I've done video upon this also. We have discussed about consolidation of land holding, sealing on land holding, abolition of zamindas, cooperative farming, tenancy reforms, all our land reforms and post reform land reforms also we have discussed and the impact also we have discussed in detail okay so these are GS topics now related to caste system first topic you may not be knowing perspectives on caste system that we will study in detail here apart from that features of caste system if you see most of you already know like untouchability is there uh, hereditary occupation is there marriage within caste is there okay Ge uh, passed on from one generation to other so all these are actually you know features of caste system Next topic, untouchability. What are the different forms of untouchability? Okay, so that is something which we'll see. Already you know, perspectives. Here we'll discuss about Gandhian perspective, Ambedkarite perspective, etc. These all are again GS topics. Okay, so tribal communities in India. See, if you see colonial policies and tribes, this you will be studying in history anyway. Colonial policies, you can get mains question, you can get prelims questions also. Then issues of integration and autonomy. What are the problems in integrating tribes of the mainstream society? We will see that geographical spread. Which tribe was located in which area? That is a geography question. Like you will get questions in prelims directly, right? Santals belongs to this area. Gons belongs to this area, like that. Then definitional problem. See, the problem here is, can you define a tribe properly? 
uh, you cannot define them as adivasis you cannot define them as primitive you cannot define on the basis of backwardness because many of the tribes are now modern many of the tribes are part of civil services they are better educated they have all better facilities for example if you take minas minas is a tribal group but many uh, there are many in numbers when it comes to ias and ips Okay, so backwardness is not a criteria of defining the tribes. Can you define on the basis of language? No, because different tribes having different language. Can you define on the basis of religion? Not, no. So there are different problems in defining the tribes. Okay, so I hope uh, you understood this. Now see, if, uh, the advantage of taking sociology as option is, as I've told you, all these are your GS topics. So in GS paper one, you have history, you have geography and you have social issues. So this social issues will be entirely covered, completely covered. You don't want any separate preparation. Okay, so even if you're not taking sociology as your optional, you have to study the entire paper two of sociology for this particular area. And you get around five to six questions for sure mains. 60 marks uh, you know minimum 60 marks question you will get from this area so you cannot leave this you cannot take chances over here so it is better to take sociology as option plus not only gs1 this is going to help you a lot in your essay you will definitely get one essay for sure and if you are lucky you will get two essays also from sociology and ethics i have told you it will give you a lot of perspectives interview also it will help you a lot by giving very good perspectives about each and every you know issues okay the way you see ish issues will be entirely different to a common man who's studying some other subject that is for sure okay that advantage will be there even if you are you know not getting any benefit your perspective of seeing things the way you see things the way you perceive things everything will change you may not know that the change but gradually that change will be there in within you okay once you study the perspectives okay next uh, social classes in india agrarian class structure industrial class structure middle classes we will discuss this okay then systems of kinship exactly the same thing that we have discussed in paper one we will uh, see here in the indian context lineage and descent in india earlier just lineage and descent types of kinship systems in india in north india south india how the kinship system differs like uh, in south india you can marry your uncle right so there are different uh, concepts different and central india eastern part of india western part of india northeastern part of india how the kinship systems are different one question is for sure okay family and marriage in india household dimensions of family patriarchy entitlements and sexual division of labor we have discussed already in paper one religion and society what are the religious communities hindu muslim six parsi zoroastrianism christians everyone everything we'll discuss you already know that problems of religious minorities apart from hindus all other communities are minorities so firstly we will do we will see the common problems of minorities in general and we will see specifically what are the problems with respect to each religion okay each minorities okay then social changes in india visions of social change in india so if you have attended my planning module, we have done around six, seven lectures there. I have discussed completely about development planning, mixed economy, everything we have covered. So this is again GS part, but sociologically we will see in a different way. Constitution, law and social change. I've told you how constitution law brings social change. These are indicator of social change and this in itself will bring social change. Okay. How life of female changed, etc. We have discussed. Okay. So education and social change then here rural and agrarian transformation in india programs of rural development community development program cooperatives poverty alleviation schemes economy green revolution and social change see green revolution we have discussed already economic dimension we have discussed it ensured food security we have discussed food scarce country to food rich country we have discussed everything we have covered but what are the social impact what are the impact on family what are the impact on caste system etc is what we're gonna see here for example one of the sociological understanding if i tell you about green revolution which you might not have thought of even i'm sure that you will not even think of it right see it's like this uh, for example what are the green revolution areas punjab and haryana okay so what will happen with the demand of agricultural labor in punjab and haryana demand for agricultural labor will be high there what about non green revolution area the demand for agriculture labor is less and the wages are also very less but in green revolution area wages are high so what will happen is will there be a possibility of migration of agricultural labors yes agricultural labors will migrate from 
non green revolution to green revolution area so what will happen here do you think they migrate with family no because their wages are already very low right so the male population will go so what will happen in a green revolution area the male population will be high what will happen in non green revolution area male population will be low and this is one of the most important reason one of the reason for uh, you know adverse sex ratio in punjab and haryana there may be other reasons cultural reasons etc will be there but as a sociologist i will be in a position to tell you and also to convince you that green revolution is one of the reason for adverse sex ratio in punjab Punjab and Haryana. As a normal student, you won't think of it. You won't even, you know, accept it. Also, okay. But once I can convince you, you will accept it. You have to accept it because of migration. This will happen. And you know what happened in this area, source area, or in the non-green revolution area? You now the females have to take up agriculture because male agriculture labors have gone in search of better wages. So that led to feminization of agriculture in non-green revolution area. This was a GS question. and that also lead to feminization of poverty so all these are you know connected to green revolution all these are the social impact and only a sociologist can think in this way and that's what i mean by the difference between a general student and a sociology student no other subject will give you such a kind of in depth understanding of any topic which is relevant for upsc exam all these are relevant for upsc exam and only sociology will help you at this level no other subject will benefit you like the way sociology benefit you okay and i have experience and i have benefited a lot with sociology that's why i'm telling you again if you have not yet decided your optional no doubt after the session you go with sociology and you don't want any background for sociology i'm i have completed engineering then i have done with sociology and i can teach you sociology also okay so if you have uh, if you have some confusion uh, okay then leave that confusion take sociology if you have already opted for sociology you have done a very good decision stick to it no need to change and uh, if you have any doubt i am here to clear this everything related to sociology if you need to write a test or if any if you have any questions you can just message me i'll be there to help you if you have taken some other subject and if you are thinking of sociology again you can think of it okay so if you have not uh, completed your preparation or if you have not attended your classes completely you can still think of it you have time for that so okay we'll continue then changes in changing mode of production in indian agriculture from subsistence farming to capitalist farming we will see problems of rural labor bondage migration or these are general topics industrialization and urbanization in india evolution of modern industry in india growth of urban settlement working class structure growth mobilization informal sector child labor slums deprivation in urban areas we will discuss this politics and society paper 1 also we have discussed this nation democracy citizenship here we will see in the indian context political parties pressure groups social and political elite regionalism decentralization of power when you talk about regionalism we will see how we are going to do regionalism i'll just show you an example as a sociologist how will you write we won't just talk regionalism in terms of between two states or demand for separate state etc etc okay see once you talk about regionalism first we'll talk about intra you know intra state regionalism that means within state like for example i'm from kerala so there may be a possibility of you know uh, uh, you know a rift between southern and northern part possibility okay so that is also called as regionalism from trivandrum to calicut okay so that is regionalism only but that is within state intra state that may lead to demand for separation of state and that's what exactly happened in case of telangana andhra pradesh etc okay so that is what intra state regionalism then what about inter state that is what we commonly talk different languages for example tamil nadu kerala or from northern state to southern state there is regionalism okay then supra state regionalism is there secession from the country is also there that is also regionalism so all these dimensions is what we need to discuss when we discuss about regionalism not just between states okay that is a very confined understanding and not holistic understanding okay so again a sociology student will write it in a better way secularization your gs topic only directly there in your syllabus social movements in india now if you see women movement now just go back and see 2017 essay paper one of the question was this new women movement and new women movement is part of women movement only we will cover old women movement and all women movement okay in that new movement is a part of it so that was actually asked as a essay and sociology student can write that in a much better way than anyone else any other students 
because we cover the concepts we cover the case studies we cover the examples and everything and the demands and achievements everything we cover okay then all these are potential essay questions peasant farmers movement backward class Dalit movements environmental movements ethnicity identity movements etc population dynamics population size growth composition distribution components of population growth population policy and family planning emerging issues all these are gs and essay topic problem of aged problem of minority sex ratio child and infant mortality reproductive health okay then uh, you know this is also a very important gs topic and essay topic crisis of development displacement see when that there is a development for example a dam is created for example if there is a multi-purpose project who will be affected the most people will be displaced from that area and tribals will be mostly affected okay now can you settle them properly i'm not talking about only economic settlement or by giving them land is not the proper settlement you need to settle them culturally you need to settle them socially you need to settle them psychologically and emotionally so all these are required will you be able to do that and that's what i mean by this environmental problems sustainability poverty deprivation inequality we have already done in paper one violence against women this is always an essay before and every time you can get this question violence against women i'll tell you how sociologists will write normally people will write uh, you know hitting and sexual violence etc all these things will write but sociologists will write uh, manifest violence manifest violence means the violence which can be seen latent violence latent violence so this is how so that violence which cannot be seen for example indecent representation of women in an advertisement that is also a latent violence because the other women who see that there is a kind of you know uh, security issues insecurity will be created okay and again we will further divide here manifest violence within family within family and outside family outside family outside family is what the sexual uh, issues etc we will discuss within family we will discuss domestic violence etc uh, you know here also within family like discrimination to female child girl child okay then outside family this indecent representation of women etc so manifest and latent something which can be seen something which is hidden hidden violence is also there glass ceiling effect etc within family outside family so this is how a sociologist will write and remember women uh, related anything women is al always a very good marketable item when it comes to upsc exams okay you will get good marks if you write good no when, women and mahatma gandhi also if you have very good knowledge you will be in a very good position to utilize it when i said marketable item i mean it in this way you will be able to score good marks not uh, in any other way okay so ethnic conflicts caste conflicts communalism religious revivalism illiteracy disparities in education so that's about the session i hope you understood everything that we have discussed again i'm telling you if you have not yet decided your optional take it for granted go with sociology for example i can tell you clearly that from here two questions will be asked for sure this this means if you see two questions will be asked you see previous paper two questions will be there every year minimum two questions and maybe three questions also will be asked so if two questions are asked from here next year from this three two questions will be expected so it is easy it is predictable so much predictable and so easy to score marks so i'm telling you again okay not as a teacher or not as just running a coaching institute or something like that you know uh, if you have not yet decided your option 100% you can trust me take it for granted go with sociology okay there are enough materials and if you face any problem you can get in touch with me okay so that's a promise and you will be definitely benefited definitely you will be getting benefit out of that okay you will not regret in 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 future if you have already decided sociology you have done the great thing okay that is going to help you a lot so i hope you understood we'll stop here if you have any doubt uh, get in touch with me this is my instagram id always keep in touch and join the telegram channel not only sociology i have done videos on uh, you know uh, history completed we have completed modern india almost all economy we have completed some are there part of paid lecture apart from that we have completed and uh, we have uh, we have also planning to do ethics ethics in future we will do after your prelims we will do that sociology important theories uh, and the first few parts we will complete in youtube itself all those videos will be available in telegram so okay this uh, and quantitative aptitude and if you are in case preparing for cat that higher level quant videos also we have done okay so see you guys thank you